So let's see what we can do today. So we're starting uh, the next chapter, which is going back from chapter five to chapter four. We're gonna be looking at fractions now. So introduction to sine fractions. Now, some background, obviously fractions can be used a variety of ways. We can use it as division. So six over three is equal to six divided by three, which is two, or to indicate equal parts of a whole. So seven out of 10 equal parts is seven tenths. Now, some of the integer facts, or excuse me, fraction facts that we hopefully are aware of is some of the terminology. So the proper name for the top of the fraction is called the numerator. The proper name for the bottom is called the denominator. And of course, we have the fraction bar in there as well. So there's two primary types of fractions we're going to be dealing with, so proper fractions and improper. So proper fractions will have their numerator smaller than their denominator, but improper will have their numerator larger than or equal to their denominator. So some examples, so we had a half, two thirds, 10 out of 21 are all proper. Again, the top is smaller than the bottom. But over here we got three halves, five fourths, 11 out of 11 would all be considered improper because we can write them different ways. And we're gonna see how to do that later on. Now, the next step in this is looking at when do we have fractions that are equal to each other? How can we determine that if one fraction is equal to another one? So we're gonna visually compare one half and three six. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna draw two boxes, one on top of the other one. And I'm gonna to try to make them exactly the same. Now the first box, I'm going to go right to the middle and cut it in half. And then I'm going to shade one side. So these two pieces are equal in size. So I've shaded one out of the two equal pieces. So there's our visual representation for one half. If I wanted to do something similar for 3 6, the first thing I got to do is chop it up into six equal pieces. Okay, I'm going to try my best. So let's try right here, right there. Okay, it's not perfect, but hopefully you can kind of see where I was going with it. So we got our six pieces here. And so now I want to shade three of them. So I'm going to shade this one and this one and this one. And you can see visually because we started off with the overall same size box, I chopped this one into two, I chopped this one into six, shaded one, shaded three. It's the same amount. So we can clearly see that these two fractions have to be equivalent. So, ta-da. <laughs> but we don't want to draw pictures for every one of these problems. So how can we do that differently? And the way to do it differently is to look at multiplying or dividing one fraction to change it into another one. So let's see how that works. If we multiply the numerator and denominator of one half by three, we get three over six. So we can see, we just multiply the top by three and the bottom by three, that gets us to our new fraction. So that's gonna be the key. As long as we do the same thing to the top and the bottom, either multiplying or dividing, then we should get the same result, the same fraction. So let's see it in action. So. We have find equivalent fractions with the given denominator. So we basically want to know what the question mark has to be to make this work. All right, well, let's take a look at the first one. So the first thing they did was we started with a seven and then they changed it to a 49. So the question you have to ask yourself is what did I multiply by? And the answer is seven. If I multiply seven times seven, I get 49. So based on from before, I have to do the same thing to the top. So I have to multiply the top by seven. So that forces my question mark to be equal to 21. 
And that's all they want you to do is just to try to determine what that question mark has to be. Now we're going to see other techniques used later on, but right now, you know, we're not doing anything fancy. We're just looking at it and saying, what did I multiply by or what did I divide by to get to my new number, my new denominator? So in this case, what did we do? Yeah, we had to multiply it by 5. 4 times 5 is 20. So if we multiply this 1 times 5, that gets us to 15. All right, what about the next? We're going from 8 to 24, so we had to multiply by 3. And so that means our question mark has to be 15 again. All right. Well, what about this one? Okay, so now they're trying to get a little sneaky with these negatives in here, so we got to be a little bit careful with those. But how did we go from 60 down to 3? What did they divide by? Now, if you're not sure, divide these two, and that will give you the result. So, if you divide 60 divided by 3, that means I had to divide by 20. So, i got to do the same thing to the top. So, my question mark better be equal to 1. Now, what about those negatives? Do they mean anything? Well... Not in this one, because you had a negative on this side, and you got a negative on this side, so it's already taking care of itself in this case. So we didn't have to worry about it in our answer. But let's look at the next one. Mm -hmm. We got a negative on this side, but we do not have a negative on this side. So that does mean something. But let's first look at the number change. So we're going from 18 down to 3, so we got to divide by... Yeah, we got to divide by 6. So we got to divide by 6 on both sides. So that's going to give me a 2, but because I'm missing the negative, I have to include that in my answer now. So you got to be careful. Sometimes they're going to include it and sometimes they're not. So you got to know when to include it and when not to include it. So in this case, we need to include it. So negative 2. Now, what about this last one? Wow, that's a big one. So we're going from 8 all the way up to 3,912. So what do we do? we got to figure out what to multiply 8 by to get up to that. Well, we have our calculators. <laughs> so how can we determine 8 times what equals that? Well, I can just divide that, can't I? If I divide it by 8, 8, I get 489. So that tells me that I have to multiply by 489 to get to there, which means I've got to do the same thing to the top. So what's 489 times 3? Well, I can just multiply that times 3, and I get 1467. So that for forces me to get a new numerator of 1467. Not terrible. So again, this is just a little warm up for fractions, looking at equivalent fractions, equal fractions, and we're gonna see more of it in the next section. So stay tuned for the next video.